This coming Saturday, I have the privilege of hosting a gala on behalf of MAP, that's Mothers Against Poverty. They are a local nonprofit here in the Bay Area that have been uplifting a mission to serve impoverished communities around the world for years now. Joining me on behalf of MAP is Brian McWilliams to discuss the event and, of course, all the work that they've been doing for all these years. Brian, thanks for being here. Well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you not only being involved in the event, but having me on to uh, talk about it and talk about the amazing work that Moms Against Poverty does. And it truly is incredible, and that's why I do want to let people know who might not be familiar with MAP what exactly it is they do. So basically, Moms Against Poverty is a global charity for children. Uh, essentially, it, it's, it's an interesting organization in that it gives people in the Bay Area an opportunity to really reach out and help people not only in other nations, they work in 16 different countries right now, working in education, working with poverty initiatives, working with water and food scarcity, um, and also just in general to, to focus on areas in the Bay Area where they can help out as well. Because during COVID, there was a lot of focus on hygiene, a lot of focus on, again, food scarcity for disadvantaged communities. So they're really all encompassing if you wanna help children and also families in need. Um, right now, to give you a little bit of insight into some, some of the specific things they're doing, a lot of focus on Iran, uh, the Afghanistan and Iran border. Obviously, with the Taliban taking over, there's a lot of families rushing to the border there that need urgent help. So they're focusing a lot of time on that, working with an organization on the ground. Here in the Bay Area, I was just talking to a uh, the Castro Valley School District and work that they did there, wherein they view their mission as to fill the gaps. And by what, what they mean by that is essentially whatever an organization needs, be it a shelter, be it a school, be it a, a church group, where they have people that are in need, MAP will work with them to figure out what that need is and try to fill it. Whether that is hygiene, whether that is washers and dryers for poor people that are disadvantaged people that need to have access to clean clothing, whether that is food, they will come in and help out in every way they can. That is truly philanthropic work, humanitarianism from the heart. And as you mentioned, unfortunately here during the pandemic, a lot of help was needed right here in the Bay Area and across the United States. So you, you mentioned a school district, also one here in San Francisco, I believe that they worked with. And how did they end up filling the gap in those ways? I believe food insecurity was a big concern. That is correct, yeah, especially during COVID, a lot of food insecurity was a big problem. Um, specifically with the Castro Valley School District, they had worked to create a resource room and what that turned out being was basically they worked with the, the uh, school district itself to create a room that had food. Uh, they provided not only the food and also uh, clothing items, also hygiene items, but they also worked with the organization and the school district to provide the freezers, the refrigerators, uh, washers and dryers for clothing. So what they found was that the people that were disadvantaged in that community really needed pretty much the whole gambit. So what they did was found the resource room, they established an area where they could donate these uh, these goods and services and really set up a full stop area where people could come in, wash their clothes, get their food and avoid a lot of issues that you're seeing with um, shortages in some of the food banks that might exist because we're seeing supply line shortages as well. So MAP really found a way to work and, and get in within the organization itself to make it completely seamless and provide those services for the people that need them. And again, this is an international mission too, which is incredible, 16 different countries, and uh, it really runs a gambit from different things like food, shelter, healthcare, as well as education. I can't imagine how they're able to get all of that done with a group that's right here in the Bay Area. Um, how do they end up partnering with these people abroad in order to bring these necessary services to them? Well, it always starts with a suggestion, to be honest. A lot of the times it's supporters of the organization that come in and they say, you know what, I found out about a, a area in need or I found out about a, a regional nonprofit that's doing work and MAP will look to partner with them or establish their own mission on the ground there. They do have people that are on the ground uh, in Cambodia, in Senegal, uh, in Iran. So they'll go in and partner either with people that are already there or they'll look to establish their own. I mean, for example, they've built something like, I think 10 schools in just the past year alone, um, looking to forward their education initiatives. They do work with children that are orphans as well. And uh, in Iran, for example, their partner on the ground there, they're actually really working on a water initiative because Iran is going through a heavy drought. So on top of all the issues coming from uh, the Taliban and refugees, they're also helping out with the food scarcity and the water scarcity there, helping out these uh, these drought-ridden countries. But 
as you said, it starts with a suggestion. So people have a chance to really get involved. Once you become involved in the org, once you get involved in donating or going to the gala, which unfortunately, by the way, I'm sorry to say is sold out. The community response was amazing. So it is sold out, but there's so many other ways to give and you can have an impact. You know, you can have a project and you introduce it to them and these people will absolutely open their hearts to it and will look into it. And this is pretty much how it all starts. And really looking forward to that event. Again, it is also fortunate that all those tickets are sold out, but there are other ways to give back. People don't necessarily need to center themselves around this event that happens once a year. They can give back all year long. How can they do that? Well, they can give back by one-time donations, ongoing donations, or a brand new thing that uh, actually just, just introduced and is kind of debuting at the gala, if you will, is Shop at Map. And this is where they're, they've launched a new foundation that's tied in with the main parent organization. And the goal of this was to empower women and to give people a sustainable economy in a lot of these impoverished or disadvantaged communities abroad. And they're also looking to do this here. And what Shop at Map gives you, which is uh, just shopatmap.org, is the ability to go in and you can buy handcrafted goods, uh, you can textiles, jewelry that are really made by the artisans, made by these people that are on the ground in these countries. And it gives them a direct source of revenue and a sustainable source of revenue. So it's all fair trade. It's all designed basically to work in tandem with their other vocational programs and with other um, programs that they have on the ground there to try to get these people on a track where they have a sustainable income and a solid you know, means of getting food, of getting shelter. So that's one great way people can really look to help out. And uh, hey, holiday season's right around the corner, right? So might as well give a gift that has a heart. Yeah, and made by hand by these artisans who really need all the help that they can get. And I really like that aspect of this. It's not just like a one-time gift or bringing them some sort of supplies and then just hoping that it lasts them as long as they need. This is a way to uh, uplift and maintain these people's skills in order that they can end up uh, making money for themselves and, as you mentioned, help out their local economy. That's exactly right. And it's something that as I mentioned, works so well dovetailing into everything else that, that MAP is doing. When you have these skills that are being taught, you have the economy building up there, it passes not only from the people that are working and designing those skills and making those crafts, but also for the children that are depending on them. And also it's a teachable skill. Um, in studies that have been done into handcrafted goods and how these are some of the most profitable and it comes down to simple economies some of the most profitable things for communities that are up and coming for impoverished people to be doing and, and creating directly so it's just a fantastic way to you know, I said get involved and what i love about it is that you are literally as you said yourself you are literally changing a life by buying this good by giving this person a chance to to create their own future well, unfortunately, as I mentioned, for those people who might have been looking forward to getting some of those last minute tickets to the gala, it is already sold out. But again, it's for a great cause. Looking forward to that group this Saturday. And for people who would like to join in and help out year round, you can visit MomsAgainstPoverty.org. Thank you so much, Brian McWilliams, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. You're watching Cron On, streaming Bay Area News 24 7.